so a couple of days ago i put a post a channel update in the community section talking about being sick and having to halt my live streams and youtube uploads for a bit while i'm trying to get better but i wanted to contextualize it further in a video format that will actually reach more of you because not everyone looks in the community tab or they do if they see it but if they subscribe to a lot of channels it might just get missed so i want to tell you everything that's been going on well first things first i'm going to talk about the channel a little bit as you can see here i was you know, uploading videos pretty regularly back here but when the race the world first started i had to focus primarily on that and i can't take time off of that to record videos because i still have an obligation to both uh dbm and the guild i'm working with so i always knew that i'd have to pretty much stop uploading like regular videos about the stuff you all came here to watch now i did a bunch of streams because it's easier to stream what you're already doing like my analyst work or updating dbm than it is to like record a video set up the green screen and all that and like sidetrack my time because when I do that, then I'm taking time actually away from DBM usually because working on DBM is not good uh, video content so much as the analyst stuff is. So if I'm just coding for hours, I can't make a video out of it, but I could make a stream. So I was doing streams regularly. But as the streams went on, you probably noticed, but I was getting sicker and sicker. Like I was literally spending half the stream coughing and muting the microphone if I got to it in time. And that was starting to have an impact on the streams. Like it was becoming less and less watchable because I literally could not stop coughing. I was I was a mess. And at points, I just had to pull the plug and go. You know what? These streams, even these streams, are no longer up to quality people expect. Now, in general, the streams performed poorly anyway, but they were at least you know kind of stable here. But then, as I got sicker, there was a gap, and then here, like it's just bad and as you can see it's bottoming out because obviously we don't have anything at all no streams or videos it's crap now that's the part about the streams i want to talk about and like why i did that even though i knew it'd be bad for the channel i knew it'd be bad like if you look at the bigger picture you can see here's my one now these two bus bikes are outliers this is the video that went viral and got 60k views that's an outlier this is about normal. And this is patch day, where I again had a video that was sort of an outlier because that video basically capitalized over what a mess the patch was. Like it broke a lot of add-ons and people came, came here to figure out why. And I had a video ready for it because I just knew that was gonna happen. And you know, a nice analytic spike, but a terrible long form video. Then here, people were wondering like, what the hell? He's normally doing analyst stuff. Why did he upload three dragon riding videos? So obviously this area is worse than this area because those videos were against the content most of you subscribe for. I get that. They were more or less... Uh, I was already going into the race the world first uh, prep at this point and I was spending a lot more time coding. So what I did is I recorded all four of these videos in advance, like over here, and then scheduled them out just to fill a content gap when I knew I was already going to be working on DBM like full full time in crunch to get ready for the world or yeah the world within launch no the war within launch so that's what's going on there and then obviously you can see the part where I stopped uploading videos entirely did streams for a bit and stopped doing streams and yeah 78 viewers a day it is what it is as you can see I'm coughing a lot less so that's why I'm able to record this video now I got a shit ton of cough medicine and mucinex and everything else to clear it up. But now I want to kind of dive into the health side of things to explain what's really going on with my health in general, because that's something that comes and goes. I actually get those periods of time where I, don't, I can't stop coughing for long periods of time. And it usually doesn't go away for a while. And it sucks. But I've been to three ENTs two pulmonologists, my primary care doctor, and even an allergy specialist. I've been thoroughly tested. My lungs have been x-rayed three different times. My nose has been thoroughly diagnosed. 
literally no one can tell me what is wrong. They haven't been able to figure out what it is. But I have two chronic issues. One, my sinuses are perpetually inflamed and swollen, which makes breathing through my nose significantly difficult. I have to use things like, uh, I heavily use choreal steroids and stuff over the counter to try to help with that. It doesn't really help, but you know, I feel like it's better than nothing. On the worst days of it, I have to actually bust out the afrin to try to reduce the swelling, even temporarily. But that's not a long-term solution. Even the drug says, don't use this constantly because you actually... It causes the opposite effect if you, or if you abuse it. It can only be used when you, days are emergent. On top of the blockage, because I'm blocked up here, and that, yes, you've noticed too, when I'm talking, I'm always nasal sounding 24-7. It's this. I can't do anything about it. No one can, apparently. I, the last year, or maybe a year before, I'm not sure at this point, I even had an expensive surgery where they went in there and tried to clear out as much as they can. They moved three polyps, which had built pretty big, Opened up all five sinus passages, but even post-surgery, inflammation didn't go down. It's always inflamed. And every time I went to the ENT, he's like, you're clear as I can get you. Like, I can't remove anything else. Everything in there is just swollen. Like, I can't cut your nose off, you know? It's just, you've got to deal with this inflammation. You've got to figure out what's causing it and reduce it. Now, obviously, nobody can figure out what's causing it. The allergist I went to. Not only did he do a series of scratch tests, he did a significant amount of needle tests where they took like 32 needles and poked me with every allergy they can think of under the sun. And most of them are negative or minor at best. Like I've even talked about on stream that I have a mild cat allergy. That allergy doesn't even cause the inflammation. It just makes me sneeze if the cats get close to me for a long period of time. And that level of allergy is minor. Like they can't even explain <laughs> there i go saying the coughing's gone anyway it's not as bad as it was but they can't, the allergist can't explain the inflammation that's always there in the nose nobody could figure that out and the pulmonologist has looked at my lungs because i've had a lot of the lungs is where all the coughing comes from and no bronchitis no covid no anything they can literally see nothing wrong at least in two x-rays. Now, I haven't gotten anyone to agree with CT yet. I would love to have like a high contrast CT to see like what kind of mucus buildup or whatever's in there or what maybe they'll see that the other stuff hasn't done. But it seems like they don't want to do that. Like they just, I think I'm overreacting in a way. Now, anyways, all this escalated to the point where Monday I had a peak, like a, uh, at this point, I'd already stopped streaming and doing videos. But Monday, I was driving my mother to the doctor. And my, that day, my coughing was at its peak worst. Like, I'm talking. I was coughing, spasming constantly. To the point where my mother was like, you need to go to the hospital. Something is wrong with you. And, you know, I was like, this happens. Like, I know what, they're, they're not going to be able to find anything. They never do. Anyways, I was driving her to the doctor. Which happens to be next door to the hospital, by the way. Which contextually was helpful here. But as I was driving her, I got one coughing fit that would not stop for like 20 or 30 seconds. I'm talking, I could not get air into my lungs because my lungs were only pushing out. At this point, I am freaking out. I actually went into a full panic attack because if the coughing did not stop, I would literally pass out because I was not getting air. But the coughing finally did stop. And I immediately start breathing. But obviously, when you're in a panic attack, you uh, hyperventilate. You know, you're trying to overcompensate. So I started taking in too much air instead of the right amount and made it worse. So here I am driving to the doctor and hyperventilating and i told my mother i'm going to the hospital i i'm not okay right now i'm going to the hospital at that point i i told myself to calm down 
and regulate my breathing because I knew I was hyperventilating. I, I caught it like, and so I controlled my breathing, you know, breathing in for three seconds, holding for four, releasing over like seven seconds, you know, because like some, some of the times you, you don't realize is you can actually have too much blood oxygen and too little CO2, despite the fact like you're told CO2 is bad for you, oxygen good. You actually have to have a balance of it in your system, and that's why hyperventilating is bad, because what you do is you flood your blood with oxygen and not enough C2, and the oxygen makes you lightheaded, and it just... It's, it's just as bad. It's literally just as bad as not breathing at all, is breathing too much. Speaking of breathing, I need to take a second to catch my breath. And that's why I'm, I'm going to get into that, too, is, uh... I, got, I went to the hospital and told them, like... At that point, I'd been regulating my breathing. I was able to talk again. You know, lightheadedness was gone. Everything was fine. But then, I still want to be checked out. I'm like, you know, it's been a while since I had an x-ray. And my coughing is out of control. I want a chest x-ray. I want a COVID test. I want everything. First of all, they denied me the COVID test. They're like, you're not running a fever. You don't have COVID. I'm like, okay, if you insist. They did give me two x-rays. Looked at the x-rays and said nothing wrong. Then they told me, your coughing is a sinus infection. I'm like, I don't have a sinus infection. I know I have a sinus infection because I get those frequently too because of the buildup. In fact, I recently got up for a sinus infection a few weeks ago. So they're like, yeah, we're going to give you some Bactrim. It's a sinus infection. That's all that's wrong. It's irritating your nose. It's irritating your lungs. That's why you have inflammation. I'm like, and I told him, I told, I responded almost sarcastically at this point. It's like, if I have a sinus infection, boy, I've sure had this infection for 20 years now because this is a chronic condition. And she kind of scoffed at me at that point. Like, the staff at the hospital was not good. I'm going to tell you that now. And I'm going to get into that further. So then she starts armchair diagnosing me in a different way. She's like, oh, you're just, uh, you're, you're like in hysteria. You have anxiety and having panic attacks. And I was like, I've never had a history of anxiety in my life. I did have a panic attack, but it was a direct flight or fight or fight or flight response to a coughing spasm for 20 seconds. And I got it under control once I realized what was happening. I was like, I don't have anxiety. She's like, oh, you do have anxiety. You do have anxiety. I'm going to write you a prescription for uh, whatever the shit is that I have over here. I don't even know. Something with an H, like hydroxyzine, mean, something, I don't know, some kind of anti-anxiety med. So she gives me that. And I'm trying to explain to her that's not the problem. But here's the thing. She spent the next 20 or 30 minutes repeatedly telling me over and over again, I've got, I clearly have an anxiety disorder, and that's the problem. I'm like, I have PTSD. I had, a, I had a bad experience, but I don't have anxiety. But then I come home, and that night, I kid you not, all that shit she filled my head with implanted the idea of anxiety in my head, and combined with the PTSD, since Monday night, I actually have had anxiety. Because here's the thing about anxiety. Anxiety comes from an irrational thought in your brain that's implanted in there for one reason or another. And this doctor did not do me any justice by instead of ignoring what I was saying and how well I know my body. She just repeatedly drilled down that I had a different issue entirely. And since Monday night, I've gotten maybe three hours of sleep and I've had to hyperfixate on my breathing to prevent myself from having an anxiety attack the entire time, even though I've never had anxiety in my life. And it's all because I cannot get her words out of my head, these irrational thoughts where she's like, you have anxiety. Now, I recognize that it's mostly PSD, PTSD. Like, that experience was traumatic. And, you know, when you have a traumatic experience like that, it's hard to get out of your head. And... I do my best to, like, rationalize, but here's the thing. I'm over-analytical. I mean, my whole channel is about analytics, you know. So now, like, right now, 
I'm literally analyzing my breathing as I speak and purposely taking a very specific amount of air to just suggest my stomach fills up the just right way and take and do an specific exhale. Like I'm doing, I'm doing breathing exercises even now while I'm talking because my analyst brain can't shut the fuck up and let my body automatically take over. Like basically, since Monday night, to put it in nerd, nerd terms, my uh, auto breathing daemon background process stopped running. And I have to continuously, literally 24 7, focus on my breathing. And if I don't, I actually stop breathing. I mean, like, if, I, if for a second I get out of my head, I will actually stop breathing for 10 seconds before I'm like, oh shit, I need to take a breath. Like, that's how bad I've been the last. Well, it's now uh, Thursday morning, Monday night. So I've been in that state since leaving the hospital. And it's scary, but I'm managing it. Now, the sleepness thing is the issue is uh, because I'm, ha I'm focusing on my breathing 24 7, it's very hard to find sleep because the second I start to actually doze off, like I'm actually in a state where I'm half asleep, half awake. I stop breathing. I stop breathing. Ten seconds later, I gasp for air and I'm wide awake again. So this is my this is where I've been since Monday night trying to get sleep. The only sleep I did get was when I reached the point of exhaustion. Like uh peak Wednesday night. I got to the point where you know, okay, it's been almost 48 hours since I slept. I literally crashed out. Like at, at that at that point, there, there was no space in between sleep or not sleep it was passing out from exhaustion i only slept for three hours and i woke up because i stopped breathing in my sleep so add sleep apnea to my issues thank you fucking doctor for planning ideas in my head like i'm gonna tell you about doctors you don't diagnose someone you just met with a severe ex disorder and then tell them they're wrong when they disagree with you within the first five minutes of meeting them. I blame this doctor for this because, like, like I said, if they just recognize what happened, you know, I just needed, I just needed to, like, calm down from a PTSD ex ex situation. And uh, really, when I told, I told her what I needed, I said, give me a mucinex, give me a decongestant, and give me some good cough medicine. I said, I need good cough medicine because the coughing fits stop. The breathing issues stop. She refused to give me a cough medicine prescription. She refused to even give me a mucinex. She gave me anti-anxiety meds and a fucking Sudafed and an antibiotic for a sinus infection I didn't have. What a fucking quack. But anyways, today I've been doing a lot better in terms of rationale. Like, I think the further away I get from that incident, the more I'm going to get back into my normal space. Maybe I'll finally restart that fucking auto breathing, you know, execute and get it running again. But in the meantime, this is what I've been going through. And it's been quite frankly, it's been hell. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Not not but I can honestly say now I now I now I feel for people who actually do suffer from chronic anxiety issues because you know seeing it from this side, it puts new perspective on it for sure. And I'm hoping it's not it's not going to be a persistent issue, but I don't think it will be. I think eventually I'm going to get out of my fucking head and, you know, get back to normal. And that's the biggest thing I'm trying to focus on. I'm trying to focus on my normal routine. I've actually been updating DBM. Doing updates. Like, I literally did uh, Rashan in updates earlier to update it for Mythic and LFR based on public logs. And I even updated story mode. So, just because story mode apparently has completely different phase changes and timers. And I had to get that updated. I haven't pushed a new release yet because I'm kind of still working on the race to world first and seeing how the race is going so I can add more updates along the way before I push one out. Especially since both those things don't matter that much. Like, if the story mode mod is wrong or having invalid timers, it's fucking story mode. Like, the update will be pushed eventually when I get the other mythic updates in there. But I'm not going to rush an update for that because it doesn't matter. You, can't, you literally can't even die in story mode. Like, I literally died on purpose while I was uh, writing notes and checking some shit. 
and the NPC is like battle res me. Like it's kind of funny. Like I mean, instantly. <laughs> Seems like it's time to take more cough medicine. Now I had to get some over-the-counter stuff that was pretty weak, but the pharmacist did help me get like at least the strongest over-the-counter stuff I could get. And I realize all the excessive talking makes me cough more too. So there's that. But yeah, I want to do this video update to talk about everything that's going on with me and I'll continue to keep people updated, maybe in the text format. I don't think this needs more than one video, except just to tell you that like, I'm just dealing with literally just PTSD anxiety that I'm just trying to get under control and get my breathing normalized again so I could get back to, you know, being normal. And I'll get there, you know. I'm not, I'm not like dying or anything, you know. I've been thoroughly, like, I gotta stick out the x-rays and stuff, you know. And if things do get worse, again, I just continue to have problems with sleeplessness. I already have a plan in place, like, where I'm just gonna delegate some stuff on DVM to someone else and just, if I, if I literally have to, check myself into a different hospital and say, look, just knock me out for eight hours. Like, here's what's going on. You know, I've slept three hours in the last fucking three days. I need to knock me out and get, get this under control. Now, of course, they'll probably send me home with even stronger anti-anxiety meds. Like, oh, let me talk about those meds. I actually tried them to help me with sleep. They had no effect on me at all because the way I, I am, I was already staying calm. Like, it's a calm anxiety. So these meds that calm me more, yeah, it made me a little more calmer, made my head nod a little bit. But ultimately, I've, I've been maintaining calm. Like, even in this video, even when I'm regulating my breathing as I talk to you, I am calm because I'm regulating my breathing. The only time I have issues is when I stop regulating it manually. Like, I just... Right now, I'm just getting to the point where I just need to restart my, my brain's Automatic regulatory functions, because right now they're they're all whacked out, and let me tell you, that's not a fun experience. And the biggest issue is causing a sleeplessness, because as I said, when I put my head down to sleep, that's when my manual regulation tries to trans or transition to auto regulation and fails, and then I'm like back wide awake, and it's like I'll try a couple more times. It's like I really, I really, really try to keep telling myself, nothing is wrong, you stupid fuck. <laughs> That's the way I talk to myself. But anyway, I was like, nothing is wrong. Get this shit out of your head and get it under control so you can get some sleep. But you know that doesn't work. You can't, I mean, it does for some, but for me, I guess it doesn't work. Now, I've already tried a bunch of different things. Meditation. ASMR, etc. But again, I'm already relaxed. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not trying to relax myself. I'm trying to restart my fucking biological functions. And if you have any tips on that, please let me know in the comments because I could really use some tips. I've even tried looking at Google, but almost everything online has to do with the uh, calming and anxiety attack or calming anxiety in general. But the thing is, I'm not anxious until I stop regulating my breathing. Like, I get anxious because I stop breathing. It's, it's, it's a whole mess. Like, I'm repeating myself at this point, and this video is longer than I planned for it to be. But I did want to give you an all update, and I'm sorry this is not the normal channel content. Some of you are probably even going to unsubscribe about this video because, well, a lot of you already unsubscribed from the streams. My subscribers actually gone down since I did live streams because a lot of people only follow this channel for the video content I was doing and not for, like, live streams that were eight hours long, you know, playing War Within, you know. Live streaming hasn't been a good format for this channel. And, like, I went back and forth on whether it should even be sent to this channel or to my uh, other channel, my... uh. 
So what is this YouTube channel? Oh, I hate that autoplay. That's so annoying. My VOD's channel. Like, I might start sending live streams back here when I start doing them again. Because I realize people just don't want them on this channel. I only put them on this channel because I knew there'd be no videos for a while. So it was like a bridge gap. I felt like it was better than nothing, and it kind of was. But people did get annoyed with it. I think once I'm actually doing videos again, the live streams will still go to this channel. So if you want to see them, go here. And by the way, when Silent Hill 2 comes out, this channel is going to have that playthrough. Even though it's not an RPG or ARPG, it's still, I mean, I'm just going to use this channel for all my other games, basically. Because this channel is like, well, analytical stuff. But you're stuck with the dragon racing stuff, so if you don't like it, just ignore when these videos go up. But these are not going to be that often. I realize this is different content too, but still World of Warcraft, so there's no better channel to put it on. But these videos will only go up for new dragon races, which they don't add often. So please stop unsubscribing when one of these appears, because there will be other videos like the ones you subscribe for as well. Whenever I get my shit together. So, anyways, that's what's going on. That's all I really have to say about this matter. Thank you for putting up with this nearly 30 minute video. I'll be saying shit that I probably could have said in two minutes in a text post, but I just wanted to humanize it a bit and share my experience with all of you. And honestly, for some of your uh, thoughts and stuff on it too. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you for all the likes and subscribes you do throw at my videos when they go up, you know, and the engagement you give me. And thank you, thank you very much for the one video here that went viral and got 60k views, even when I only had like 100 subscribers at the time. This one, chan this one video basically built the whole channel. And even though, uh, as soon as it hit 60k views, YouTube literally took it off the front. They, they, they took it down. It's not even being uh, shown anymore. So this video has run its course, but it had a good run. No video has come close, and maybe I'll hit that vent again one day. Let me get back to it, and it'll be your, your feedback that helps me do it. But thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.